Howdy folks, Troy with V-Twins the V8s. I'm coming back on to show you how to polish stainless steel that you have repaired. Let's get at it. Alright folks, so you spent some time, you watched my other video, which I'll put a link to up above, and uh, you spent the time and you did my technique where you pick file and hammer and dolly your stainless steel and then you sand it a bunch of times and you get it down to something that looks sort of like what I have here which is kind of like it almost look like looks like brush stainless steel so you got it to that point now you want it to get it shined up so it looks like chrome so when you put it on your car it looks like brand new so that's what we're going to work on today. So what I have in front of me is a bunch of the uh, tools that you'll need along with the buffer and what we'll do is we'll get a close-up in. I'll show you the different compounds and also the different buffing pads, the cleaning tools, whatever it is that you'll need to get this job done. So let's go. I basically need some buffing wheels, a way to clean it, and some polishing compounds to polish your stainless steel. So much like when you buff the, your paint, like I showed you in my other videos, there is a series of steps which is known as scratch refinement. So you start off kind of coarse and you move your way on down the line and each progression is a little bit finer until your final polishing it gives you that brilliant shine and it's very smooth and very shiny because the scratches are so tiny you can barely see them so what we're going to start out with is the coarsest thing so the coarsest disc that you'll have is um what they call sisal it kind of looks like if you if you looked at it it looks an awful lot like an old um an old style rope. It's like a it's like a heavy material. It's kind of coarse. We use the sisal wheel first to get the heavy scratches out. Then we go to this little bit softer wheel, but it's sewn pretty hard and it bridges the gap between the sisal and the uh, the this soft fluffy rouge wheel. So the next one is this softer wheel here. Um, what I do, if you notice is I mark them. So I've got an SS on my sisal, that stands for stainless steel. I've got light gray written on here knowing that I've used this with my light gray polish which is my intermediate step. And then you have this really soft, um, it's like a bunch of layers of cloth stuck together that's kind of wanky. And um, this is for your fine polishing and you notice I have it mount, have it marked that says white rouge because that's what I'm going to use on there. The thing with your uh, pads is once you use them for a certain polish you should continue to just use that pad for that polish because these pads really hang on to that material. So you'll see once we get into it we apply some of the compound to the wheel then we use it then we apply some more and continually and it lasts a long time. This doesn't work like the compound whereas we put the material onto the surface and then do it. We actually put the materials onto these pads. So there's our pads. We have this this uh, cleaning tool which basically kind of looks like a wooden handle with a cleat on it and what this is is basically just that. It's got a bunch of teeth on it and when we run run it run the buffer we run these this tooth thing across these pads and it cleans out all of the black gunk hardened compound whatever is in there cleans it out fluffs the pad up much like the spur does in our other video on um i'll post a link for that on how to uh, sand and polish your paint. We use a spur tool to clean a wool pad and uh, this is in essence the same type of uh, cleaning process. Okay so I've arranged the pads in the succession that we're going to use them. So we have our sisal, stainless steel, our sisal pad is for our heavy cut. We use this black compound. I've got this compound that I've gotten from the folks at Eastwood. They have a full line of it. I'll put some links down below for that. Then we go to the light gray, which is your intermediate. I get this stuff here in bulk. It comes in this giant um, tube-like. 
It's very similar to the Eastwood product. It's just larger. I get it from the folks at TP Tools. And this is your intermediate. We use this with our intermediate pad. And then we have what they call white rouge. And that is what we use with our really soft pad. So what we'll do next is we'll get the pads set up on the on the buffer. You'll notice the buffer's two sides, so we can set it up with two pads. We'll set it up with sisal and light gray. We'll do those two. And then we'll we'll set it up again for the light rouge and we'll put a nice polishing on it. Okay, so this is the buffer I use. I got it from the folks at Eastwood. You can get these at a lot of different places. Um, it's a one horsepower. This is a pretty good size piece. I've also mounted it on this piece of plywood. They have it so you could bolt it to the floor. I don't use it enough to leave it in one place, so I use this big piece of wood that you'll see here. And what that does is it makes it so that I can just take this, pick this up, and move it wherever I want, but yet it's still nice and uh, stable when I use it. So you're going to see a couple of things on this buffer. You're going to see low, zero, and high. I do my buffing on low. I don't see any real need to have this thing spinning at, at, at crazy speeds. Okay. On here, you'll actually show it shows you uh, what steps for what compounds, things of that nature, which is kind of nice. Um, I don't see where it shows you to use a high speed, but you'll notice that you'll have your rotations pointed this way. This thing's going to turn in this direction. Therefore, what we're going to do is, as this is spinning, we're going to be using this bottom edge and never getting above this center line here okay so now that i've shown you the the uh the buffing machine i'll make sure i post a link in the bottom okay so what we're going to do is we're going to put our sisal wheel on first and what we do have to notice is which way our pad has been worn in and um, basically all of my fibers are going this way so I know that this thing has been turning like this. This buffer will turn so that the bottom edge is going away from you. You're going to want to use that bottom edge I'll show you in a moment. So we're going to mount the sisal wheel on this side over here and then we're going to mount the intermediate on the opposite side. We'll get this all on here. We'll tighten it up. I'll get my light gray one on here so I know I'm going in the right direction. And uh, you'll notice that uh, either side of this is one is right hand thread, one is a left hand thread, just to be aware when you do this. Okay, this needs to be tight so it doesn't come off, but it doesn't need to be crazy ass tight. Uh, if you just snug it up with a pair of channel locks, you're good to go. So, now I've got my buffer on here, I'm all set. My wheels are on here, I'm all set. Next thing you we'll do is we'll get this fired up and we'll, um, we'll clean these pads and we'll get ready to do some polishing. All right, before we get into this thing, let's just talk a couple, a little bit about some safety. So you're going to want a pair of gloves. You're going to want some safety glasses for obvious reasons. Some people may want to wear a dust mask. Uh, that's going to be your choice. I'm not going to get into the whole OSHA thing or whatever. It's, it's whatever your preference is. All righty. So here we are. We're ready to go. I'm just going to throw these gloves on real quick and put on my safety glasses. And we're going to go ahead and get this going. Now one of the things about this wheel is um, more the sisal wheel than anything else it will uh, shed and throw a, a clump of material every once in a while that's why we have the glass the glasses. So we're going to turn this on now we have this going we've got our tool and one of the things we have to be conscious of is this thing is turning this way it's much like the whole buffer thing you have to be aware of which way things are turning so you do not get hurt okay if I were to touch the top of this everything is being thrown towards me so I would not want to put 
anything on top of it or anything above, say, this center line. I want to work at, if you were looking at the end of this like a clock face, I would want to work in the, say, 8 o'clock to 6 o'clock position. So I want to work that little arc in the clock. So in other words, I want to work 8 o'clock to 6 o'clock. I want to work on that very bottom because what it's going to do is if I catch anything or anything goes bad, it's going to throw this item away from me, not towards me. It's going to spit it right out of my hands. And trust me, stuff like this happens, especially if you're, going to, if you're trying to polish something small. Be very, very careful and make sure you're wearing the proper safety equipment and make sure you're on the proper area. So I'm just going to take this tool and I am going to touch the buffing wheel to it in that 6 to 8 o'clock position to clean this pad out. Now I don't have to wrench on this very hard. I just want to go on it lightly and boom. Now I fluffed it up, it's ready to go. I'm going to go over here, I'm going to do the same to this other side. And what this does is it just cleans and fluffs up this pad, takes all the matting out of it, and makes it so you're, you're dealing with some nice fluffy material. Okay, so now we've got this all set. We're going to start with the sisal. So we're going to start with our heaviest cutting material, which is this black. So now what we're going to do is we are going to run this material on the buffing pad in that sweet spot, that 6 to 8 o'clock position. Now, what I have now is I have material on this pad. Once I have material on the pad, I can start doing my buffing. So, I'm going to grab my molding and I am going to work from one edge and off. So in other words, I am going to just let it run on this edge and I'm going to move it around and it's going to start to polish my material. Now, I don't need to put a lot of pressure on this and I want to be very careful that I do not catch any of the edges because this thing will grab it and like I said it will spit it right out of your hand. See now as I start to run this on here I will start to see this piece starting to polish up and shine. Now don't get me wrong this is can, can tend to be a long process. So you gotta you gotta be patient with it. So my suggestion is much like when we're doing the uh, the paint work, the buffing on the paint, I do small areas, recommend that all the time. I recommend the same thing with polishing of the metal. So oh, now I can start to see this and I can see that I'm polishing up nicely and I will just kind of continue going. I mean there's not really a lot that I can tell you about this. What I will do is I'll put my other camera on up close so you can watch this, you can watch this actual technique as it happens and that's what I'll be doing next. You want to make sure you're going off the edge. Off of the edge. You'll notice that I put my hand underneath the bottom of this. It kind of helps to guide it so that you don't... have your molding pop off to one side or the other but you can see it now <coughs> it's starting to it's starting to develop a shine if you'll notice my wheel is turning this way so I will kind of face my molding that way 
so that I'm not going to catch an edge. I'm going to be running right linearly or parallelly with my molding. So if I go off the side of the edge, it's not going to catch the molding and wing it out of my hands. See, now you're starting to see it get a little bit of a shine to it. You have to re remember, this is your first application. So this is where you're working on removing your heavier scratches and imperfections. So just like with the buffing of the paint, this is the part of the process that takes the most time. You look at that, it's starting to look pretty good. And we just keep on keeping on. How do you know when you're done? When it's shiny enough for you, you don't see imperfections you don't want to see. It's going to be kind of one of those things. Okay, so I turned the buffer. I went to this uh, larger camera so that I can show you a little bit different angle of me doing this. I am going to add a little bit of buffing material to it, which doesn't take much. Just run it on here just like that. This way here you can really see how I'm working that 7 o'clock position. So I'll just kind of cup this like this. This way here I can put a little pressure on the molding and uh, if, I, if my molding should pop off of here it's not really going to go anywhere. It's not going to fly up into this. So this is really all I'm doing. I'm just running this molding on this pad for days, weeks, months, <laughs> hours. No, not really. I mean, it's it's like all of this stuff. It takes a lot of time. So I'm just going to keep at it. And then when I want to do this edge right here, I, I like to stand it right up on edge this way here and put my pressure like that not turn it this way because my pad will catch this and it'll bend my molding so I want to make sure that when I do my edges I just run the edge on there like that like see what I'm saying the worst case scenario is uh, I end up going like this or on the other side if I do it this way worst case scenario is this pad catches this twists it slams it against here and it makes a freaking mess out of your molding and then you got to repair that. No, it never happened to me. I'm lying. Of course it happened to me. Remember what experience is just a whole bunch of mistakes. So here we are. So now, I mean I got that shined up pretty good compared to this. Hopefully you could see that. I'm going to continue, I'm going to do all of this molding and the other one with the sisal, then we'll move over to the intermediate. Alright folks, so I've, I've completed the uh, polishing of this entire one molding anyways with the first step. And um, I've laid it next to the, um, the molding from the other side. What I've decided to do is I'll do one side complete from start to finish. That way there I can lay it down next to my other molding that has yet to be polished and you can get a contrasting difference. Okay, so now if you look at my two moldings here, you'll be able to see what's going on. This molding here, I've done the first process. This molding here has uh, is just like it was after I did my, um, my pick and file repair and then sanded it. But as you can see, this top molding looks pretty darn good. I mean, some people probably would just take and say, hey, you know, that's good enough for me. But um, we're going to take and polish it the entire way so that we have a molding that looks um, as if it's new. Okay, so for the ease of filming, I swapped my discs around off camera. I'm going to work on this side. That way there I can have a close-up camera to my right. And you can see what I'm doing. And then I've got this camera for this angle. So I've got my intermediate... Um, buffing wheel on here and I'm using my black emery which will provide my second step. 
I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to run some of the black emery onto this pad, and then I'm going to begin the second step of the polishing of that one molding. So uh, let's get to it. All right, I had already cleaned my pad prior, so now I'm just going to take my emery here and get it right on this pad, coat it up nicely, and. We'll start just like we, as we did before. Now, much like the buffing of the paint, the buffing of the metal is very similar. Uh, the first process takes a little bit longer, and the next ones thereafter would subsequently each take a little bit less time because you're doing less polishing, really. You're just refining that shine. So I'm doing the same exact process with this polish as I did the last one, making sure I'm not going to catch any edges. And I tend to keep my molding moving so as I don't overheat any particular area. I'm working that small area, generally between a couple of screw holes that I got there, and then working my edges. And then take a look at it, and it, it looks pretty good. I mean, it shines itself right up nicely. And uh, I'm going to continue on. I'll put the uh, close-in camera on so you can watch me actually do it. And I uh, will continue with this process throughout this molding. You can see it really brings the shine up nicely. Always staying away from my edges. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty darn good. I'm just gonna go ahead and start focusing on my next section here and continue to do it the same way so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go off camera and I'm gonna polish this entire molding just like you're seeing it now and then we'll do another uh, little comparison on the bench then we'll move on to the uh, to the final part of the process okay so here we go now this is my original molding this is my polished moldings and I'll just kind of go along it so you can see, I mean, you can see the, the, the difference in the shine after just the two polishings. Now, the last polishing will bring the shine up to the end, you know, bring it up as much as you can. And then after that, you can use some chrome polish or what have you. This, uh, this is a very soft pad, so it really wings around. You've got to kind of be careful with it and uh, clean it up. We're going to take and put our white rouge on there. Notice how it's white. Plenty of that on there. And now we'll just start like we usually do. Right on the end. All the same principles apply. This is just going to put a higher shine on it. The 
this pad is very soft. It's just like a stack of fibers, a stack of rags almost. Really gives things a nice shine. You can watch how this really brings the shine up. Almost almost chrome like. I think that's looking pretty darn good. And just continue on down this molding just like this. This uh this pad being much more flexible is also a lot less, a lot more forgiving. You're not quite as apt to catch it and rip the molding out of your hand, but you still have to be really careful. There we go. Looks pretty good to me. So there's our two moldings. The one obviously closest to me I've polished. Um, the one on the inside has been sanded and, and straightened, but it's going to need the polishing. And uh, I will do that one off camera and finish the job. All right, well that concludes our video today on uh, polishing the stainless steel. Uh, if you didn't watch the previous video where I show you how to do all the repairs, uh, please uh, check that out. That'll I'll leave a put a card up above so that you can click on that uh, at the end. Um, please like the video if you like it and subscribe if you could. That would help me support my channel. There'll be links down the below uh, to purchase anything that you need to do this project. I'll put links there and if you could click on my links if you're going to buy something that would really help me out and I would appreciate that. So uh, in conclusion please like and subscribe once again and uh, good luck on your project.